Hello, I'm Prof. Marcus Song, and thanks for the opportunity to update you on Singapore's out-of-hospital cardiac arrest data for 2018. Now, here's a quick snapshot for everyone uh, of our uh, latest statistics, and you can see that we are still having an increasing incidence of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest in Singapore, with 2,972 cases recorded in 2018. The good news is that our bystander CPR rates are still increasing, uh, as you can see from 56% in 2016 to 61.8% in 2018. And bystander AED use has also increased from 4.6 to 7.2%. We are also seeing correspondingly more patients having return of spontaneous circulation, or in other words, having their heart successfully restarted from 12.5% in 2016 to 13.1%. And correspondingly, we had a record 175 survivors in 2018, although there was a slight dip in the previous year, 2017. And in terms of the international benchmark that we call Woodstein Survival, which refers to witness shockable arrest, we are now at 25.9% in Singapore. And 67% of these are survivors with good neurological outcomes, in other words, with intact brain function. So there's much to be uh, grateful for, and there's been a lot of progress over the last 10 years. You can see that since 2011, our bystander CPR rates have steadily increased from 22% to 61.8% now. And that, I think, has been a major factor driving our increase in survival. But there are other factors as well, including increase in bystander AED use, as well as multiple interventions that we've been able to put in place in our EMS system over the last 10 years, including improvements to the ambulance capabilities such as mechanical CPR, ability to give drugs and use various uh, devices in cardiac arrest, to our community outreach efforts to increase bystander CPR through our telephone CPR program, the DARE program, putting AEDs uh, in public places, as well as, for example, our My Responder initiatives. Now, the background is that our cardiac arrest uh, incidence rate is still increasing, and that is irrespective of whether that's the crude rate or the absolute number of cases, and even the age standardized rates, in other words, accounting for an aging population. And I think what is driving this is that we have an increasing burden of chronic disease where more and more uh, of our population actually has hypertension, diabetes, and underlying heart disease. And you can see that uh, the aging population is also driving uh, that increase. As you can see in the orange line, the incidence of uh, cardiac arrest in the above 65 population has increased dramatically. And in general, the males have uh, doubled the cardiac arrest rates compared to females, uh, but you can see increases in both groups over time. In terms of ethnicity, uh, you can see that there's a much higher incidence rate in our Indian and Malay population, but all three races have been seeing increase in their rates over the, the last few years. And here we are looking at uh, the uh, increase in terms of the survival, uh, which is mainly driven by survivors in the less than 65 year age group you see in the blue line. While at the same time, you know, the overall number of cardiac arrest cases have been uh, increasing and driven by the incidence rate in the population above 65. Uh, while you see that the uh, survival rate in those above 65 has more or less remained constant. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that implication is for our system as we move forward. So again, you can see the uh, encouraging overall trend of increasing number of survivors every year. And we are now seeing more than 150 additional survivors per year <clears throat> compared to what we used to have more than uh, 10 years ago. And as I've mentioned, a lot, I think, is being driven by increases in bystander CPR and bystander AED use, which is thanks to a lot of our partners here who are listening to this talk in our community uh, that are driving our community outreach programs to increase bystander 
CPR and AED use. And this is what we call the Utstein Survival, which is an international benchmark uh, based on the number of witness shockable rhythms that are able to survive. And this allows us to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges across different cities and countries in the world. And so uh, we have done well. You know, Singapore used to have uh, Ustein survival only 2%, maybe in uh, the early 2000s. And this has climbed steadily to 25.9% currently. And a reminder that uh, more than two thirds of the patients that survive actually have good neurological outcomes. And I, I think again, this is uh, driven a lot by improvements in bystander CPR and AD, uh, but there's still opportunity to improve this with further uh, advancement in post resuscitation care at the hospitals. And uh, just to remind you now, you know, that when we look at the proportion of population that is above 65, this has been steadily climbing over the years. And you know that Singapore has one of the most rapidly aging populations in the world. What does this mean for our cardiac arrest survival rates? It means that we will find it increasingly difficult to maintain our survival rates as more and more of our cardiac arrest population is actually going to be the above 65 a group which has multiple underlying chronic disease and the outcomes may not be so good for this uh, population. So in other words, we'll have to work harder just to maintain our current survival rates. And if we want to improve further, you know, it will actually take additional efforts. This is the return of spontaneous circulation rates. And you can see what's encouraging is the blue line that we are seeing more and more patients have a return of pulse or successfully restart their hearts at seam. However, there is, of course, a trade-off in terms of there are fewer patients that will subsequently have a return of pulse at the emergency department. And I think the other thing that will need more efforts is that our overall return of spontaneous circulation rates have uh, only seen minimal increase over the years. The other bright spot is our dispatcher assisted CPR program. And it, as you can see, uh, this has steadily increased the percentage of uh, patients receiving bystander CPR. And this is mainly driven by the success of our dispatcher assisted CPR program. Okay, so for those who like tables and numbers, uh, I will leave this with you to slowly digest. But let me just highlight a few key points here in uh, these tables. So number one, you can see that the majority of our arrests are still occurring in homes. And that, that is uh, about 70 plus percent of our cardiac arrests. The second point I'd like you to take note of is that while we are having increased uh, rates of bystander CPR, uh, there were still 20 to 30 percent of our cardiac arrests that are witnessed that do not receive bystander CPR. And this is despite um, telephone instructions, and for whatever reason, you know, the members of the public that are calling are not able to perform dispatcher-assisted CPR even when coached by the dispatcher. And I think these are areas and opportunities for us to improve further. Now, in terms of uh, the initial rhythm, um, you can see that the proportion of arrests that have an initial shockable rhythm has declined over time. And again, I think this is uh, related to an aging population, patients that are on, for example, cardiac kind of drugs. Uh, but this is a challenge for us, which means that uh, there'll be fewer and fewer cases that are actually amenable to a life-saving defibrillation, which means that our bystander CPR and our advanced treatments on the ambulances and hospitals will have to be actually uh, improved to be able to see further uh, increases in survival. And finally, let me just talk uh, lastly about our, how we stand in terms of our region as well as uh, the world. So while we have seen great improvements in our survival rates in Singapore, and we are currently at 25.9% Utstein survival, the best systems in the world are able to achieve above 40, 50% Utstein survival uh, in their populations, for example, in uh, Scandinavia or in Seattle in the US. And so I think this is something that we can still aspire to. Uh, in other words, we still have opportunities to double our Utstein survival in Singapore. 
and even compared to our region, for example, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, uh, I think we are still slightly behind in terms of food science survival and there are further opportunities to improve. So let me leave you with this last slide, which is a summary of our 2018 statistics. Uh, and let me extend my thanks to all the CPR instructors, volunteers, and uh, the men in the street who are actually helping us to save lives by performing bystander CPR and using an AED. And together, let's save more lives. Thank you very much and be happy to take any questions.